everyone Julie here today we're going to have a look at DxO's photo lab 7 um, now I used to have photo lab years ago and it was a really good program to use but for whatever reason I ended up switching over to Lightroom and even though I dabble with other things I pretty much stay in Lightroom but there's things about Lightroom that are really starting to bug me so I have come back to Photo Lab to have another look and I must say I really am impressed if you want a great alternative to some of the other programs that are out there you don't want the complicated catalogs you don't want all of that stuff you just want good simple editing for raw photos then come with me as I go and have a little look at what you get in photo lab 7 so there's two different ways to use photo lab 7 you can import your images directly from wherever you have them um, and a lot of this is going to seem pretty similar so you're going to have a photo strip down the bottom you can tag these you can rate them you can color code them if you hover over it it will give you all your source information so things like that are fairly similar um, to bring in photos or a folder you simply go to your library and you just store things as you do on your computer however whatever system works for you you bring your photos in now I did have a little bit of a, a dilemma because I saved all my original backups on a NAS system um, but it still found those so I can go through and I can bring in whatever I want from shoots and I can edit them in here now on first glance you're probably gonna go yeah but edit where um, and I'll get to that in a second that's where the customize panel comes in but in the photo lab library let's just have a little look there's a histogram so you can come through and you can um, check out the histogram for the image your metadata is going to be there um, it's going to give you all the camera information um, you can also in bring in all your um, you can add your tags and your copyright comes over you can add your keywords your keyword list so you can add as much or as little information as you want your GPS coordinates um, or your um, information um, descriptions for the images all of that stuff I'm sure most of you are fairly familiar with the metadata so it is all right here um, you then have a compare so you compare between different images you've got a before and after side by side full screen view so that gives you full screen without all the, the panels although they call them palettes in photo lab um, and your fit on screen um, etc when it comes to editing your image you simply click on customize and then I'm sure things are going to become quite familiar there's not a huge learning curve with this because you're just grabbing your photos in and just editing them so it's super easy so you've got um, a zoom panel you can move in so if I do that I can grab this and I can move it around my image um, I've still got my histogram there I've got my history so if you want to go back through your history you can and there's a preset editor here but don't stress about that at this particular point in time um, as I said you've got compare so you can compare before and after just by simply holding it you can do a side-by-side -side panel full screen like I said um, you've also got your crop which does appear somewhere else you've got your color picker um, or sorry your white balance picker which appears somewhere else as well and your horizon straightener so there's retouch things like that they're there for quick use 
um, but they do appear other places. So what we have through here, and everything's broken down into different um, panels or palettes. So you've got light, and that's everything to do with your light. So your exposure, there's smart lighting in here, which is actually quite cool. Selective toning, um, clear view, which is really cool if you're doing landscapes with some haze and things like that. It can help clear it up. Um, your tone curve is there. Um, things like that. They're all there um, and you can play with them, you can reset them, you can slide them, you can use the, the toggle up and down. Of course you can click and type in what you want. All pretty basic. The next panel over is your color working space. So everything to work, go with color. So there's your white balance picker. Like I said it was up there but it also is here. Your temperature, your tint, um, color or black and white, that's all there. Um, there's a film packs time machine but go through that later I think um, so there's LUTs so you can um, pick and choose some LUTs there's quite a few like the 17 different LUTs in there I'm sure you can probably get more um, toning so you can do simple toning so if you want to do like a selenium um, look you can also do split toning to your images so that's always really nice the HSL oh I love this check this out so if I grab the color picker and I, I'm just going to grab another photo just for the moment um, just because I was already pretty much finished editing that one just to show you this color picker so I'm going to click on the color picker and I'm going to click on the dress and it picks the color um, so I can play around with the color the hue and all the rest of it but I can actually change it to be something completely different and you can really muck about with all of that so if you start grabbing the outer edge it's going to change your saturation if you start grabbing the inner edge you'll see if I go all the way around it's affecting the model or the dancer as well so you don't want that you want to keep that fairly small but this is the range of color that it is selecting so you can go through and you can change all of that so you really can have a lot of fun playing with that but anyway that's enough for now um, the next thing that we're going to have a look at um, and that is um, denoise, luminance um, color corrections, um, chromatic aberrations, things like that. The other thing I noticed when I loaded images up, if I used a new lens, it loaded the lens profile for that image. So that was pretty cool. Um, you've got an unsharp mask and things like that. Then you have your geometry panel, which allows you to fix your horizon. So remember I said the horizon tool was up there. Um, also your crop. So your crop is up there, but it's also down here. If you want to crop an image, you can do it unconstrained if you wish, or you can keep it constrained, or you can set a custom ratio. Um, if you were to say five by seven, I go into crop so there it comes up and then I can come through and I can do whatever I want if I zoom in oh, too far let's try 100 oh, maybe even 200 so our next thing if we want to come in is going into um, the effects panel um, you can play with things like film packs and things like that if you have them um, creating vignetting you can do a blur around the edges you can do all of that sort of thing if you would like to do a little bit of touch up clicking on the retouching panel you can come in you can do repair clone you can adjust the opacity the feathering you can I found that the show masks and the show cropped areas were off um, but I just clicked them and then it shows me where I'm picking from but if you find that that's annoying 
you can just turn that off and you can just come in and quickly do a little bit of cleanup. Um, it's great for doing all sorts of things. I found it quite, um, quite easy and quite quick to use. Um, and if you don't like it, you can just hit reset. Easy done. Um, so what else is there in photo? you can change your workspace so what we had was just a standard you can go to the advanced workspace so you've got everything there in the different palettes so you have got the light the color the detail geometry local adjustments which i haven't got to yet um, you can add watermarks and film packs we're not going to get into that in this video but we will um, there's the optics module so that's always being updated for different cameras you can apply presets which I'll show you in a minute um, and of course you can export your images um, but if you want to apply a preset okay so we click on apply presets and there is some drop downs there which are presets so you have got general purpose there is some portrait and landscapes um, and you can play around with those it's high key candy colors washed out um, you've got some black and white presets um, there's some different atmospheric presets um, and so forth and it's literally just a matter of clicking on one of those let's just find a nice black and white so maybe I will pick black and white for her um, and play with that. I'm just going to turn my retouching off um, and go back to fit. And that gives you a lovely black and white. Now, one more thing I think I want to get into just briefly. I'll probably do a more in-depth video on this which is local adjustments so this is all um, your control lines and control points if you've ever used any DxO product especially Nick collection you will know their control points their control lines they are amazing absolutely fantastic so they are all in here so you can work to local adjustments so if you just want to work on the face the skirt the hands the foreground etc um, if I jump back over to this image here um, I have got um, various um, local adjustments on this one which was um, if I bring the side by side so just looking at this image side by side it was quite dark in this panel so I did a control line and brought some more light into this side. I also did a graduated filter from the bottom up um, which helped hide some of the, the messiness that was on the foreground and the dance floor. Um, there was also um, a brush that I started putting on her hands are a little bit red so um, I was just working on that but I'll come back and I'll cover that all a little bit more um, the other thing that you can do is if you still want to keep your Lightroom catalog you can so here's an image that I brought into Lightroom and then I exported it into um, Photolab, edited it, saved it and then brought it back into Lightroom. But I'm going to go through how to do all of that in another video. So exporting to Lightroom and then importing it back into Lightroom from Photolab. Last thing I briefly want to just check off before I finish on today's video is exporting your images so if you click on export you can export to an application like Photoshop um, you can go to Flickr Lightroom etc or you can export to a disk which is more often what you're going to do 
you can do a standard output there's different settings that you can do I might do this a bit more in depth um, a bit later you can save it as a JPEG a TIFF a DNG so all your settings are there your resolution etc so I'll cover this off a little bit more in detail but I just wanted to um, mention that um, as we're running short on time so thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.